Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to a game where they have no scout. <laughs> I hate it when Mega Random does this. <laughs> I hate it. But anyways, it'll be fun for us. We get to watch it. Uh, this is a ladder game. So this is a ranked game for players that are uh, 2100 ELO, so top 200, I'd say. And uh, we have DDX, who I think is a French player. I don't know a lot about this player. Just seen them around. It's very possible that this is uh, like a secondary account for someone who is known. But anyways, playing as the Mongols, a civilization which has a hunt bonus and a scouting bonus, only there's no scout. Um, and then we also have Mongols for Megalomaniac, who is a Brazilian player who's on Leke, I think. I don't know if I'm saying that right. O-N-L-E-K-E. Unlike he's been around many, many years. I've known this guy for a long time. Um, so, uh, just wanted to hop in. You never know what you're going to find. It's rare that you don't get a scout on Mega Random, but it can happen. And we've seen some scouting with the pigs thus far. But I can tell you already that Mega Random favors the French. It does not favor the Brazilians in the world because of this. This is crazy, man. The fact that there's, there's more hunt... In this spot, could change this entire game. Hold on one second. Okay, I could hear the, the actual game sounds on top of the capture rate sounds. It was very confusing. Sorry about that. But yeah, it looks like Mega Random has given us... Uh, or given them two different groups of four hunts. And it just so happens that Red has those two groups in the same area. So an early mill here could be fantastic. And he says, I don't want to do that, actually. I'm going to collect the food from these villagers, so they've had their fill. And then I'm going to make the lumber camp, and I'm going to get the food that way. Which is true. So, bam. I think the reason he might have just transitioned to wood is because he sees the water and knows that docking could be important. So, I kind of like what he's doing here, but this is a bit crazy, man. He doesn't have any pigs underneath his TC. I guess he's about to have geese. And there goes the villager out there to eventually dock. So... We have the similar map gens, but two very different approaches. Blue also located the water. He went to wood at more of a standard timing. And he's actually using this villager to push in the deer. So that's that's one way to do it. Um, they will not know that the enemy is anywhere close until the next stage, I'm guessing. Because they probably will not scout very far with their pigs. But I take it back, by the way. I take it back. The pig is actually venturing very far away from home here. Go, little piggy. You've got it. Go, piggy. You've got it. So, Red had some TC idle time. Uh, or actually, no, he just researched Loom. That's not the biggest deal ever. He's going to add some fishing ships. And Blue's going to do the same. So, I'm not sure whose start you prefer here. But I think both players have had some struggles trying to adapt to it. Did the pig get lost? Oh, no, the pig found the enemy. Which I guess is good for red, but it's also good for blue, because blue kind of needs the food anyways, right? I like this. Because I don't think it's worth going for the mill this early, unless there's more than four. I think going for the mill at this stage is absolutely needed. And we might see both players do it. <clears throat> but blue is trying to save wood on fishing ships, or four fishing ships, I guess. And is just using the villagers to push in the deer. Which is way more difficult to do than you think. Because if you try and click behind the deer, sometimes you accidentally shoot it. And then it could die out there. So. Impressive. Lots of gold on this map. And a lot of it's forward. Now there is a back gold way back here. And there's back stone as well for Megalomaniac. Um, yeah, I imagine some water control could be really helpful here because you're expecting if the opponent has located the water that they're going to try and fish. BDX is from Argentina and this is his main account? Oh, really? I thought it was a French player. Well, you know, Argentinian French, it's all the same. Mbappe, Messi, basically the same, right? Hopefully I don't offend both the French and Argentinian population with that, but I was wrong. Sorry. I pride myself on knowing the players and I got that one wrong. There's just new Argentinian and French players coming up everywhere these days. So it's cool to know that he has a uh, background in another game, though. Okay. Feudal Age is on the way for Blue. We do not have a barracks yet. He's going for fishing ship number four. He's going forward with a villager now. There's no scout here, guys. 
the one player chose to use a pig, other players using this villager. And where will she go? What will she find? You can assume the player's probably around this area. And okay, she locates the mill. And now she's like, oh boy, this is scary. I'm all alone in this world. I have given, been given no information except to head west. And I'm over here now. And well, you know what? I'm just going to continue to run around. And hey, I found a little goosey friend. Cool. I'm going to make a house for us to live in. It's a beautiful story. Okay, sorry. I'm being stupid. Uh, Red's goose has checked the shoreline here, which is really smart on this map, and has located that the opponent has docked. So this is going to be a water build for blue. And then red, I think it is also a water build, but we don't have the second dock yet, and the timings on things is just not quite as good. I think this is amazing for blue. Because the fire galley production has already started. The goose is exploring. And the villager is headed home now. So he, she needed to find herself. She needed to find her calling in life. And she decided, you know what? The first part of my life, I thought that this town was too boring. But ever since leaving away, I, there's no place like home. Hmm. Cool walls here from Red. You can tell Red's concerned because they don't have vision. So Red's thinking, well, if I'm going water and the opponent goes land, I want to make sure that they can't actually hit me on land. Um, but, I mean, do you just, you're just kind of late to the whole water build here, and this could be a big problem for you. Fishing ships could go down. Now, adaptation's going to be needed, right? Like, are you going to take the berries? Are you going to get some farms down? All those types of things are really important. A good start for blue. Pretty close game overall, though. And a lot of different factors still matter here. This kind of tricky, though. When both players commit towards the exact same build, and you have a similar skill level, and then one player just had a minute head start, it's always hard to break the meta here. It's always try hard to, to really change how the game is going. A way to do that on water would be to make demos. Uh, we could see a demo in queue soon. But so far, one fishing ship down. Looks like that fishing ship's going to be saved. We see a third dock, and we see a third dock. All right. We do have the mill for blue. Now, normal execution things really matter here, too. Like, are you microing away? Are you repairing? Are you getting your houses down? But yeah, blue's on top of it. Blue's playing really clean here. I'm a slower player and below 800 and can do the vill push deer. Not that hard. Only forget to create villagers and have eight villager idle time in the meantime. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> I mean, I've I've accidentally killed a deer while trying to push it in before. So <laughs> maybe you just have special skills that I don't possess. Oh, man, a demo here would be so good for you, Red. Okay, so Red is kind of new. So you're saying that Blue could just scare him all the way back to Dota 2 here in a second? I don't want that. He seems like he's pretty good. Okay, decent micro. Still just heavily outnumbered. Blue's ventured pretty far. Both players losing fires. And everything seems much better for Blue. Just because he had the early numbers advantage. Here's the demo. Demo gets used. And while it wasn't the best demo, Blue has all the momentum right now. And is the 7 to 4 KD. Big demo! Big demo! Ooh, that was quite nice, though. Blue distracted. Probably doing some other things right now. Paying attention to his base. Paying attention to the 12 villagers he has in queue. Holy crap. <laughs> He's got so much food committed towards villagers right now. But that's just because he's focusing here. So it's like ship production, ship micro, and then create villagers. But he doesn't realize how many he has queued up. Mill's just now going to come up for red. Loose fishing ships are all very close to all this. They're not very far away from the action. So one or two demos from Red could change things. Still surprised he's not adding more demos. But he could still do that. Let's look at Red's Collected for us. Red's Collected. Blue is ahead by... Well, he has 500 more resources, and that 500 is pretty much just food. 
And that was because of transitioning to the deer and the berries now. Big demo. Big demo. It hits three ships there. That really hurts for red. Hmm. Red's not new. He's 30 years old. Well, I thought you meant he was new to the game. I, I am receiving conflicting reports on how new this player is. Like I said, I've seen him around. Could have sworn he was French. There's got to be another French... There's got to be a French account that's like D and a couple characters. But there's not much more. Did someone look for me on aw2.net? I want to make sure... I want to see if I'm right on this. Big demo. Always... Oh, it's hiding. Split! And the demo doesn't land. Okay, so when you make it to the next stage, you have two options, okay? Option one is continue to commit water. So you upgrade to War Galley. Option two is be happy with where you're at on water and transition into land. Now, you can kind of do both. So if you're head to Castle Age, then you go, um, you know, you upgrade on water. And then as they're defending from that, switch into land. But it's just things to think through. There goes a demo. Demo, not the best. Look for another player with D and other letters in the name. Don't give me sass. I'm telling you, there's a there's a French player. It's D, and there's less than like five characters after that. Yes, thank you. DFX2. Thank you, Daryl. See? I'm not crazy. There was a D and there was an X, and it was very few characters. And it's French, right? Boom! Lots of lots of death, destruction, fires. Woo! Demos. Woo! Excitement. Woo! D is for death. And wow, they're both down to three ships now. So, okay, I got a, the players confused. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Red did something that I would not suggest and researched Wheelbarrow on a map where you don't have a lot of farms. That's probably one of the most destructive technologies in Feudal Age on water maps because it you got fewer vills and you're not really benefiting that much from it. He did wall this way, though. And so he will be somewhat safe from any attacks on land if there is, even is an attack on land. Blue's not diversifying at all. He's just going to focus on water. Hmm. Yeah, Darl, I know. I, for, I assume you are also French, right? I know that you're always rooting for Margugu and Sato. Yeah, this is still pretty committed here from Blue. There's a lot of gold here, though, right? Like, I feel like if you take control in this middle area, I know they don't have the scouting. I feel like it could be really strong. Thus far, they have both basically done the same thing. Blue has been one fishing ship up. But finally, this is going to change. Because red's going to go to stone. And I feel like it's the perfect opportunity. You know you're probably going to lose on water in a second. But you got to try your best. What's the best unit in a Mwango War? Well, maybe it is Siege Onagers, but the unit that you can realistically get to would be maybe the Mangadai. And if you're really desperate, you have a market, you can buy stone and drop a castle. Here it comes. Blue comes in now. He's got the upgraded ships. He's going to destroy. Red's still a minute away from the castle age, and he needs to, to sort out some type of a plan. Now, we do have a demo in this dock, but it's just a demo raft. These villagers have to leave the shoreline. No more time at the beach for them. And if Blue's demos could come into this choke... Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Oh, boom. <laughs> okay, those demos were actually a little unsatisfying in the end compared to what could have been possible. And Red's holding on. Right, and the longer you hold on, the more blue might not look at other things. That's the key. But it definitely has reached the point where, I mean, there's not even that much fish left for blue. I don't think investing into the water this much is necessarily the play. That's just my thought on it. But it can make you feel very secure. Second town center is going up for blue on the stone. So the approach is we're going to have the water control. We're going to have the villager lead. And then we're going to eventually build a castle. He's easing into it. Another demo slides through. And the demo is just a trap. It was just a trick. And that was actually nice patience for Blue there. 
Okay. So, another TC now for red. I'd love to see that castle soon, right? Take the middle control. I mean, oh, man, with... With a TC here, again, if they had this scout, you'd be able to make more informed decisions. But that town center is in such a vulnerable area over the long run. But, you know, Blue, to his credit, obviously still building up. Um, or, or eventually, he's got to realize this is happening, but he's building up towards a castle. Man, like, what's... <laughs> it's crazy to me how many ships they both keep making. And I agree. I think the window for red to potentially make a castle here has kind of kind of fallen off. Feels like the water is is useless from here on out. We should be focusing elsewhere. But we know that. Do they know that? Nope. They're they're really focused on doing all the things right now. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, baby, there was food there, too. It looked blue immediately after, just bought food. So he already was having food problems. I want to see red make something happen here, guys. It's actually a much closer game than the score suggests. It can be really tricky on a water map. When you see the score, you think, oh, I'm so far behind. But realistically, it's not that bad. And neither, neither player has that many farms. They have similar amounts. There's now the castle. Blue, though, is going to see this, and I like this decision from Blue. Making outposts through the middle is really nice. And I think we might even see him buy the 200 stone to get his own castle up. Because this TC is vulnerable, but if you get a castle here, you're fine. He actually is going to try and stonewall this now. I'm a big fan of the market. I use the market a lot, especially in hybrid games where you're you're been heavy on wood and heavy on gold, and then you got to switch into something else. But guys, as boring as you might have thought the early game was in this one, uh, and, you know, as boring as it was for me to incorrectly guess the country of the player in the red, uh, this is actually turning into a pretty decent game, and it's probably going to go late. Red's Mangadai could do lots of annoying little damage to blue, giving red time. And we've got 61 villagers versus 68. It's all about eco-balance from here and how they choose to play this. Also, there's only one relic for each of them. Man, these golds, though. All this gold is so important. Now, Blue still sees this gold. He still has this gold, right? So he's not thinking that the long-term gold is, like, that big of a deal for him. But what he doesn't know is that there's gold here. He is making a castle here. This is still open, by the way. And the Mangadai for red... They have not shown themselves yet, most likely because he's committing his time towards adding the economy. Horse collar is an easy upgrade to forget while on fishing maps. But you always need to make sure that you get it before you start to transition into this many farms. Now, I like the stone walls. I don't mind it. I, I think it's better safe than sorry. I would not consider it a waste. Because... I mean, if Red was moving forward now, which he is, and there was a hole, which there is, <laughs> so it will be a waste if he doesn't plug this gap. Red's going to have Mangadai before him, so Stonewalls is actually quite nice. I probably just would have bought my castle earlier, so I could have the Mangadai numbers that Red does, but because he just kind of eased into it, the Stonewalls make sense. But oh, God. Oh, man, this is where... This is where the tilt starts to happen. This is where the frustration and the the mess of an economy starts to get worse as he drops a castle here. He is going to add his own Mangadai. And his TC did weaken some of these, but he's got to make sure these Mangadai don't progress back here. This is good, though. This is good damage control. He's seeing if there's any gaps. Plug in the gaps. Monk dies. Sad times for the monk. The red trying to kill the villagers should honestly kill the farms. Yeah, take the wood. Well played. Blue is two castles now. And red doesn't know about this one, and bam. Good micro from red. Sees the villagers. Wants the villagers. Bam, 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 bam. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, stop chopping trees here, villagers. Unless you really want to die, then you should stay here. It's all up to you. It's your choice. 
Look at the idle time for blue as well. Oh, man, and this still isn't... This gap still isn't plugged. I would be frustrated. And the eco efficiency is not where it needs to be. Hard to get that balance right. And he's still got a mass Mangadite to come deal with this. Red is macroed very well behind this too, guys. Right? He's got really good food eco. He's getting ballistics now, knowing Mangadite are going to be important. He does dive here, which he may regret in a moment. But I like his thought process. Just aggression. And still keep looking at this. But pretty soon this game's going to stabilize. Red is going to lose these Mangadai. Uh, Blue has had double castled Mangadai production. So if Blue could just get his units here, Blue should be able to take better engagements. Uh, neither player has bloodlines yet. Mangadai take tons of upgrades, which we'll talk about. But anyways, Red may be realizing he needs to back away for a second. And he's definitely thinking about Imp. So I, I think if it was Mongols versus another Civ, I'd say defensive castle. You just want Mangadai production. Mongols versus Mongols. Lots of golds here. Maybe a more aggressive castle to take away his gold. I don't know, though. You still want Megadite production. So, I like this castle. Just, yeah. Just build it. I actually don't like it. I would have preferred it here. This is the most important area. But he wants to protect his flank. It's next to another stone so we can get more. Red two minutes away from him. Blue building castle number three. The guy still has 23 on stone. So the balance of the eco just isn't there. And it's harder to balance your eco when you have Mangadai running through your base, right? And oh man, oh geez. He probably doesn't realize this. This is interesting though, guys. So Blue says, I've got my walls down now. He can't actually do damage with his army. And I see that they're there. So I'm going to go to the other areas of the map. And I'm going to try and raid this side because I've just taken out this wall. I've still got some navy. Now, what he sees, though, right now, is there's a castle there from red. That was such a good castle from red in hindsight, wasn't it? Because he is vulnerable there. I wonder if blue is going to uh, maybe go this way. He doesn't know it's open, but I wonder if he'll take the risk. He actually has just run through this way. Yeah, and red realizes he's vulnerable, too. So, But red knows, like, right now... There's no army here, so I must be vulnerable there. It's really good thinking. Oh, God. I guess Blue didn't try and run through here the way he did. It was just the pathing. Guys, we have so many castles. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And now Blue's like, well, that, that area's a waste. Can't go that way. I'm coming back. Red's opening with Trebs. Again, I've been very castle critical, but I would like to see this castle here instead, just so you could sit your trebs underneath the castle. Because Mangadai can snipe siege, so your siege needs to be protected in an ideal world. So let's talk through upgrades they're both missing. Both need the stable for husbandry and bloodlines. Husbandry for speed, bloodlines for HP. It both will have the armor upgrade researched. Blue's catching up in a second. They're missing Thumbring from the Archer range. They're missing Parthian Tactics from the Archer range. Elite Mangadai. And then uh, Bracer Chemistry, which Blue still needs to get and can get. Is Red going to trickle the Trebs? I think you can do so because you're able to... Y you have the better army now. Your opponent's still in Castle. So you're able to just start off with one Treb and not really worry about losing it. Mangadai are not elite. Stone mining upgrade. Other upgrade. He's getting husbandry now. There's the range for Thumbring and Parthian. Blue's going to get elite Mangadai right away, though. I think you can give up this castle. And there's elite Mangadai. I also like how he's researched elite Mangadai in the back, right? Because you need the production closer to the front. Small things like that can make a big difference. This is a close game. Also, I like the fact that Red's making a lot of villagers, but when you get over 150, that, even with Mongols, could maybe be considered an overboom. Elite Mangadai is on the way for him. 
Blue is bloodlines coming in. Red, please tell me you're getting bloodlines. He's only got 60 HP on these units. It'll be 80 HP for Blue. Blue doesn't have Bracer, though. Or Chemistry. <laughs> it evens out, I think. Okay, Treb's gonna go down. Blue backs away. Okay, that's kind of funny. The one that worries me the most, though, is Bloodlines. Because if he didn't get that... Okay, now he has it. I don't actually think it's an issue for Blue not to be making Trebs right now. Because Trebs take a long time to produce. And Mangadai Mass is king. I don't think it's that big of a problem. Yeah, obviously, yeah, I don't think you can lose this castle. I think you have to go in here and snipe these Trebs. He will be fighting on top of a hill here. Look at the stone counts. Holy cow, man. The blue, no chemistry. Red trying to dodge. That's actually good work. He, he's forcing blue to miss a, lot of sh miss a lot of shots here. Blue's still on the hill, though. And if he finds a moment, he just goes in and takes the treps. Says, hello, trebuchets. I'll take you. Thank you very much. Because I'm Mangadai. And you are Siege. Goodbye. And now you back away. Red is 166 bills and counting. Ooh, boy. I don't know about that one, pal. I don't know about that one. Also, there were two relics back here. Blue got two relics. That's nice. Let's look at res collected. Blue, Red's obviously ahead because he has so many bills, but it's not like he's ahead in the gold and the stone. Is he said Parthian yet? I think he's still missing Parthian, right? forget the Parthian armor. No, red got Parthian. I think it's in. Anyways, you think of Mangadai when you think of post-it Mongols. You think of Siege when you think of post-it Mongols. The other thing to think of would be Hussars with all that extra HP. So we're seeing red start to tech into that now. Red continues to, to do this. Blue says, I'm going to do it too. Do, 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 do. Here, Hardy, you can edit it in. Okay, never mind. Okay, well, I've ruined it. But yeah, um, that, that dancing is so, so important here. Blue's missing thumb ring. Ooh, not having thumb ring hurts. Definitely a tech you need. You can tell the difference in the firing speed. Because of no thumb ring. But blue has the hill. The accuracy as well, obviously. Red tried with Trebs for the second or third time. And blue's trying to click the Trebs. He keeps missing them. And this will be an expensive loss. But it'll be an expensive loss for both, right? I think in an ideal world, you are still firing as you retreat there, though, if you're blue. I don't know. We see drill now for red. So he wants Mongol Siege as well. I think Siege on is actually makes sense here. I really do. Like, Hussars, Hussars definitely something that you can consider too, but... I think one or two Siege Onager shots can change the game, so why not? Also, Blue's found some extra stone here. Stone count's just been unbelievable. Why not Mongol Cav Archers as an alternative to Mangadai? Because they're so much worse than Mangadai. Yeah, that's just the, the honest answer. They are good. They are better than majority of Cav Archers, but Mangadai are so good that it, it, you would just get destroyed. And the main thing that you could consider uh, is that it's this bonus against Siege, which really helps you with the with the Mangadai. Because Cav Archers do not take out Siege quickly. So the fact that your opponent can't Siege Ram push you or Treb push you easily because you could just snipe their Siege in one volley is really a big difference maker here. Okay. Red has a big boom. We talked about it. 168 bills. He's trying to get technologies, which is great. But he's actually pop-capped. He has over-boomed here. Now, he is over-boomed with the purpose of having the food to be able to make Hussars and maybe even mixing in Siege. But it is currently 46 Mangadai versus 26 Mangadai. The over-boom's good if you recognize it here and delete some bills. I actually really like it. But... Population efficiency is so important here. Where are Blue's Trebs going? Well, he's going to see this castle. And he... Oh, he just wants to come to the hill here. 
And I don't know if red can come up that hill. Blue could also repair this, maybe? Uh, maybe that castle was ill-advised. Blue having the hill here is really interesting. 52 Mangadai. Rams on the way. I would have preferred maybe Siege Onager, like I had said. Are we sure Blue is missing Thumbring, by the way? I, I, I think you are right on that. And Blue see, sees the blood in the water. Red, though, going after this castle as he's making another castle. But Red's going to lose his Trebs here, surely. That's a Treb down. That's going to be a Treb down. Blue, oh, you got to engage, man. You've got massive numbers. Don't be, don't be afraid. Just fight. Oh, man. Mongols mayhem here, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Remember, this gold's so important here because players are going to start running out of gold soon. And red, most of his gold is, is currently being taken on the front too, right? Oh, it would be interesting if the rams went on their own in towards blue's castles. Choo choo! Yeah, because the mangadai are here. I think it would be short-lived, but you could maybe finish off this castle at least. Red is 156 vils now. I think he just deleted some because he went down to 152. So he has more pop space, but does he have the castles now? He's still got plenty. Oh, Blue loses that castle. And Blue could lose the focus here on the Trebs. Blue, fight! Fight, bro! Sorry, I'm being very backseat gamey on this one. Because they're so good. We're just like a small step below, I guess. And... There's certain instances where I'm surprised. You got this. There you go. There you go. Just engage. But you don't have a meat shield now. Red has the meat shield. Red also has more pop space. Red could lose the castle though, so it's so complicated. 25 Mangadai versus 29 Mangadai. But every time a Hussar dies, that's a Mangadai that won't die for Red. Castle still goes down. We have long-term gold to worry about. Red still has some gold here. I wonder if Blue is going to get out of this engagement with Mangadai remaining and with Trebs remaining. It looks like he is. Still gets slightly more Mangadai. And he says, screw your Hussars. Though I would maybe consider getting out of here with the Trebs. He realizes. Because uh, the Trebs here would be wonderful. They could take out this castle. Blue's micro has been interesting here. He actually just stopped going for... Uh, the Hussars, he would focus fire down the Mangadai there, and that was really nice. He now also needs to click the Rams, because losing these Trebs would be devastating, and he will. So five castles versus, well, Red just killed a bunch of Vils, versus four castles for Red. So Red now has the same Vil count because he just murdered most of his citizens. Was it desperation? I, I don't know. Rest collected? What's it at right now? Oh, Red's had more. But the KD has even been slightly better for Red, but it's honestly just production. But there is a gap. There is an opening for Red to go raid now. But there's also potential for Blue to go into Red's base for the killer blow. Dang. Backup castle for Red, who's been saving a lot of stone here. And Blue might want to get that Relic as well. Blue, happy to fight this off with Vils because the castle will eventually kill the Hussars if the Hussars are stationary. 31 Hussars for Blue, but he doesn't have the gold. He really needs to get access to this gold, and Red's still going to be able to just whoosh on through there with the Hussars. I think we're going to see Blue use the market a lot here. Yeah. yeah you need more Mangadai than this. It's really interesting how blue ran out of gold first. I guess it's just because he didn't have any of this gold in the middle, right? He didn't have this, and red's had this. Are we sure that blue doesn't have thumb ring? Yeah, blue also doesn't have wheelbarrow or hand car. That's a good point. Those are big upgrades. Even just not having heavy plow hurts because your farms are reseeding. You're going to run out of wood so much faster. Oh, God, please no. No! <laughs> Oh, God! He just lost his stone! 
That ram just zoomed in there. Sniped the castle. Oh. <laughs> I don't think Red knew anything about it, honestly. I think the ram was just chilling, looking for a job. You know, it's a tough life out there. In this economy, you're like, man, I don't know if anyone's going to employ me when there's Mangadai everywhere. Like, I'm pretty much useless as a ram, right? Why would I ever get a job? And suddenly there's an opportunity and he takes it. And he goes, bonk. Oh, jeez. And poor Blue was looking back here. Is trying to deal with this. Realized Thumb Ring wasn't in. And he's going to be kicking himself. Because the fights could have been so much better with Thumb Ring. But really easy to forget an upgrade with Mangadai. Even if you're experienced players. Just because... There's so many upgrades you have to get. That blue does have the hill here. Blue did a little bit of microing too. But I think red takes this game from here, guys. Because red still has the gold control. So, you know, for all that work that blue did on water, it didn't end up mattering a whole lot. We, we mentioned it. Mangadai control and lands control on a map where they didn't have a scout. But they could eventually realize there was lots of hills and gold towards the middle. Blue's pop is not good. Yeah, this is this is not good at all. He's at 110 pop, just like that. Like these guys were both at 200 pop, and now it's so much worse than that. The blue's a very talented player, and he did he had a better dark age, better feudal age even. But in a Mongol war, it's the reason I joined the game. You need a lot of economy, and then you need to have yourself set up to go late game and make the Mangadai. And Red did a better job at that. The overboom for Red, I think if Blue was a bit more on top of things, could have cost him. But if you get away with it, it benefits you because you float more resources to be able to make different types of units. I don't know why Red didn't get the relics. Like, I feel like that's a must-have. When you have gold income, maybe it's not as big a deal, but getting a monk out to get two relics feels like a no-brainer for me. I think this is going to be the end of Blue. He may feel like this is over after this fight. Red happily enough to throw away in the Hussars and the Rams. And he wants to go for this castle. Man, I really thought Blue had this. What a great job here from Red. Man, if you ever watches this, sorry I confused him with the, the other guy that started with a D and had an X in his name. <laughs> yes, yeah, Dram, zoom in. They'll take out the castle. No, they won't. But, oh, there's geese. Kill the geese. Kill his pets. Actually, no, you don't want to mess with the man's geese. They'll go full John Wick on you. They'll just, they'll just destroy you. Nah, you gotta let the geese go. Let the geese go take the castles. They won't get upset about the castles. I would also maybe recommend a treb, right? Like a treb or two behind all of that would have been really nice. Yeah, blue again, desperate, 90 pop. Probably like, are you kidding me, man? I don't think I had such a big lead in this game, but I'm not so sure he necessarily did. The hole in the wall earlier cost him. I think his economy was worse than it could have been because he didn't fully wall. And that's one where you get frustrated with yourself on. But apart from that, Red's economy was, was stronger and he transitioned very nicely into the castle age. And the GG's called. Look at that, though. Look at the Mangadai number. 209 for blue. So it really tells you Red's micro was superior. Or he took the better engagements. And also the upgrades. I think having Thumb Ring was a big deal. Because every little bit of uh, firing speed and accuracy can help. Resources collected in this one. A lot more for Red. Very deceiving, though. Because blue's been down below 100 villagers for a while now. Red obviously would have had more, but it got really bad for Blue the last 5 to 10 minutes. And uh, total KD, Blue actually did lead with 319 kills and 307 losses. A decent amount of that would have been on Navy, though, so we do have to factor that in. But yeah, these players had to, they went through some challenges in this game because they didn't have a scout. The map incorporated water, but yet land was really important, so... That's what's fun about Mega Random and hybrid maps in general is how important is the water? How important is um, is the land? When do I prioritize this thing? When do I make that thing? It's not easy.
these guys made it look made aspects of it look easy to the point where we could possibly say you've got 95 percent of this down why not that thing why not the other but every little detail is so important here yeah i don't think blue ever had the eco to go hussar but i honestly don't know even though it worked for red i don't know if hussar is as important as just pure mangadai numbers like, I think if, if blue, there was a moment where blue had 20 or 30 more Mangadai than red. And if he was able to afford to continue to produce Mangadai right there, which would have meant that he would have had this gold, right? Uh, I think he wins this game and the Hussars don't actually make a difference. But I think the position that red was able to get eventually paid off for him. Again, I'm not saying Hussar is bad. Just saying 60 Mangadai is probably better than 30 Mangadai and 30 Hussar. Um... Like, Red was able to go for all these things because of the position he gained for himself and all the gold he had secured. Because if you look at what this looked like at the start, look at all this gold, right? And Blue didn't have any of this gold. None of it. And Red did. Red had more gold at the end of the game without having relics, correct? Yes, he did, right? So had he had the two relics, he would have 2,000 more if he got around the same time as Blue. And then maybe would have even seen Sea Geometry there. But man, that was fun.